Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with round 17 of season 4 of the F122 My Team Career Mode. If you missed out on the video that went live last week from the Temple of Speed, or actually at the weekend from the Temple of Speed, the Italian Grand Prix, I would highly recommend going back and checking out. Apologies for the few technical difficulties we've had over the last couple of days. I think I've now got it all sorted once again. W would it be a normal map two and two month without some sort of difficulties somewhere here on the channel as well? But thank you all as well uh, for the continued support. 97k, that's now ticked off. Less than 3,000 subscribers to go before the big 100,000 there. So, you know, if you are sat here watching this video, you haven't clicked that big red button, please do so. You know, you can always click on subscribe in the future if you don't want to anymore. But yeah, if we could just get to 100k, I would be incredibly, incredibly happy. But yeah, of course, we've still got a championship fight though going on in this series. So as we head in towards Singapore, six races to go, seven points between myself and George Russell. The gap has come down drastically over the last few weekends in this championship. We've been on an absolute tear. Two wins in the last two Grand Prix as George Russell has failed to see the podium in three of the last four. We have certainly got the momentum behind us, but as we're all well aware, an engine failure can completely ruin everything on F122. So as we head back to Marina Bay this weekend, it's a track that I quite enjoy as well. It's a track that's suited as well in the past. Fingers crossed we can keep this up. Could we, for the first time ever on F122, bag three wins in a row? Here we are then once again back at Marina Bay, and I don't know whether it's the cloudy sunset or what, but this car does look subtle this weekend. Hopefully it'll go around this circuit nice and subtly as well, but I know a lot of you do keep still asking whether it is a Vodafone McLaren tribute. Never exactly was the intention, to be honest. I just kind of quite like the livery, but I would not be surprised if that was sort of where Codemasters and EA were inspired from. Um, but yeah, I mean, it does look beautiful around this circuit, similar to the way uh, the Vodafone McLarens did look all those years ago. Of course, Singapore still often remembered, actually, as a turning point for Lewis Hamilton's F1 career. The gearbox failure in 2010 is still highly regarded as the reason he went to Mercedes for 20... Uh, sorry, in 2012, even, is highly regarded as the reason he went to Merck for 2013. To be honest, he'd actually already signed the contract before that weekend, so it didn't make much difference. Um, but, yeah, let's talk about that. More we'll talk about why we're only getting green scores everywhere. If I remember correctly, Singapore is notorious for being quite difficult on the track acclimatisation lap. You just haven't got enough space to build up the speed. Because, of course, you're running such high wings in comparison to where the game thinks you should be. 50 points off purple. Oh, honestly, I'll take that. Around in the final corner, though, on our fuel sim. Run again, really struggling to try and find the delta around this Marina Bay circuit. Not the best practice session in the world, but I feel like the pace is still there. We just can't quite reach the unattainable goals that F1 likes to set us. Right, we'll immediately jump into Q3 then here from Singapore, and it's been dry running all sessions so far, but suddenly the heavens have opened, and apparently it's just going to meant to get worse and worse as the session goes on, and Charles Leclerc and I seem to be the only two that appreciate the gravity of the situation. No one else. Starting to see a couple more cars streaming out of the pit lane, but it might just be a case of first car on a run has got a golden opportunity for pole. Well, this might be one of the most difficult qualifying laps you have to do in an F1 season. Singapore in the rain. It's probably up there with Monaco, and I've just suddenly thought, imagine if we ever get some rain at Jeddah as well. That one will be quite a hair-raising experience, but round in the final couple of turns then, it might just be a one-shot qualifying session here from Singapore. We have to make this lap count, as Charles Leclerc still a little way up the road.
on the club. Oh, it's going to have slightly more optimal conditions than me, and that mistake through the final couple of turns is absolutely going to cement it. Leclerc does a 48.5. We can only do a 150.1. So we've got to really hope that the rain keeps on pouring. Or that we get another shot there. Big, big mistake through the final couple of turns as Norris will immediately split us. That's not great. Oh, I was going to go back out and do another run right at the end. But it's not going to be for anything. In fact, I'm not sure we're going to get back round in time. The circuit was meant to start drying up within the next five minutes. But yeah, it's going to be nowhere near close enough. It's P5 on the grid then for the Singapore Grand Prix. It's not where I wanted to be. We definitely could have been a bit higher up. And yeah, gutted with that. But I think Charles Leclerc will claim pole. Well, there we go then. You can just see how quickly the track fell off there. Red Bull, two and a half seconds off the pace. And apart from myself, I think everyone finished in the order that we went round on those qualifying laps. I definitely think I should have been P3 uh, had I not made that mistake. We definitely could have gone quicker than George and Valtteri Bottas, but I think, honestly, Lando Norris set one of the best lap times there. Only four tenths away, despite being quite far back from Charles Leclerc, but we've got to put Saturday behind us. Let's get into it. Singapore Grand Prix. Hopefully, we're going to get no more changeable conditions. Here we go then, it's Formula One in Marina Bay once again. And welcome to you all at home who join us today for this fascinating race around the baking hot but beautiful streets of Singapore. It's a 3.1 mile lap here at the Marina Bay Street Circuit with 47% taken at full throttle. It's hot, humid and bumpy around the 13 lefts and 10 rights of mostly slow corners. But we should see speeds of up to 200 miles per hour along the Raffles Boulevard. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole. Edging out Lando Norris, who'll start from P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Russell, Mr. Monaco, and Joe, Ocon, Perez, Theo Porcher, and Nicolas Latifi, Ricardo, Oscar Piastri, Yuki Tsunoda, and Schwartzman, Tictum, Albon, Jehan Deruvela, and Pierre Gasly. They've taken a grid penalty. Stroll, Drogovic, Mick Schumacher, and Kevin Magnussen fills the last spot on the grid. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. Natalie Pinkham joins me once again in the commentary box. It's fantastic to have you with us today. I'm curious, though, how do you think the drivers stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into turn one, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It'll keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. We need a good result today if we want to catch Russell in the Drivers' Championship. Wow, Mark actually giving some pretty handy information there. Seven points, of course, the gap to George Russell. And, well, I was about to say it could be the first time since about round five of this year that we've taken the lead of the championship. But look at that. We're just meant to get some rain about halfway through the Grand Prix that's meant to come in and then clear back out again. So strategy is going to be complete guesswork here. I'm going to stay on the hards, just in case that rain is a bit delayed. Then we might have to bolt on a set of softs through the wet period or intermediates, for all we know, and then hope that it dries up again and we can absolutely fly through the final few laps here in Singapore. But, yeah, looking forward to this one, though. Like I said, Singapore has historically actually been quite a good circuit for us. We struggle on a Saturday. We do really well on a Sunday in previous games. Maybe that will hold true today, but everyone around me on the mediums, so this is quite the gamble. Expecting some rain soon. Expect the first oh, drops in the next no. few minutes. No. The team are already saying rain's on the way. It said it was... How can they say it's meant to be in the second half of this GP and then immediately be saying it's going to be in a few minutes? I can't already be rain showing up on the halo. Not on the formation lap, surely. Surely not. Well, this could get a quite a crazy afternoon then here from Singapore. No one really knows what's going on with the weather. I'm pretty certain that is definitely rain showing up on the halo. 
there's no rain in the sky. There are tiny little bits every once in a while. It's always difficult to tell around Singapore uh, because of all the lights everywhere, but raining out then trying to put some heat into the tines. We've got our championship rival alongside us, our former rival just in front as well. But Charles Leclerc, he desperately wants to try and get Ferrari's first win of the year. Led last weekend at the Italian Grand Prix with a horrible strategy. Gave him no chance at the win. Could Marina Bay, Singapore, be his golden ticket there? He's waiting on K-Mag at the rear. Right, let's do this thing though. Singapore Grand Prix waiting on those five red lights. Lights out and away we go. And of course, starting on the harder tyres. Whoa! Horrible start there as we try and head down in towards Turn 1. We're going to try and send it back around the outside through the first corner. We actually collide. Someone's hit me through Turn 1 there. And we've been turned by Sergio Perez down at the very first corner okay, of the Singapore Grand Prix. We picked up a tiny bit of underfloor damage as well there. But Checo Perez, I think there must have just been, as we tried to swoop around there, whether he ran wide trying to go for the same piece of real estate, I don't know. But he refused to give up on it. And Checo Perez and I, immediately both of us, have been sent to the rear of the field then here in Singapore. That has been the nightmare start to this weekend. But of course we know just how long a race can be at Marina Bay and with changeable conditions as well. It is certainly not over early on. Checo I think we'll have to pit at the end of that one. We've got to hope that underfloor damage isn't going to cost us all too much. But what was that? What was Checo doing? Well let's ride on board then with Sergio Perez off the launch. You can see myself over one row and on the other side of the circuit there. Not the best getaway for Sergio Perez. Actually gets jumped by his teammate and Esteban Ocon there as we head down in towards turn one. You can just see around the outside. Where is Perez trying to go? He's got so much room if we slow it down on the apex. In towards turn one. Ah, I know why. He's got Mercedes. He's got Nicolas Latifi there on the inside into the first corner. I didn't notice that at the time that Latifi was trying to make it through there. So you can just see Perez trying to give him the room. So difficult call. I mean, Latifi probably shouldn't have stuck the nose in. But for us, nothing we could do on the initial contact there. And Checo rather weirdly doesn't then lift out of the throttle as we head through turn two. Keeps me out of the wall, but does then also turn me for some reason. So a disastrous start then to the Singapore Grand Prix. But... I guess we've just got to get on. You can already see, though, Checo and Felipe Drogovic disputing positions. So, clearly, Sergio Perez has decided this weekend he's going to try and get his elbows out with absolutely everyone. Of course, former winner around the Marina Bay as well back in 2022. But, yeah, quite impressive that in one lap we've already closed back up five seconds. Although there is already gaps starting to form. As Charles Leclerc still leads then at Orlando Norris. I think Russell has moved himself up into P3 on that one and we are still in last so there we go as well Sergio Perez will peel into the pit lane at the end of this opener so we're back up into P21 the the floor doesn't feel horrendous but it certainly doesn't feel perfect as we've still got those little bits of rain showing up on the halo next up Felipe Drogovic we're gonna try and work out where we can make moves we need to work it out pronto see Felipe there, big, big wobble over the curb, so you know what, over the Anderson Bridge, we'll get to the inside of the Haas car then, and that might be a good place to be making overtakes today, I don't think our top end speed is still particularly good, but we just know how much, how much slower that Haas car is than our car, make sure we don't hit the wall down at the end of the back straight there, and Drogovic, hats off to him for trying to give it a fair fight, but we will swoop back through, it's definitely rain though, showing up on the visor. See the first big splash over on the right hand side, but DRS now of course enabled and we'll just dive onto intermediates as soon as if it is disabled at all today. A good run on Mick Schumacher though up the Rapids Boulevard. Oi! Just tries to defend from me, but we'll get it wedged over the curbing and the outside and we'll sneak through on another move. Of course these back market cars are good three or four seconds a lap slower in qualifying yesterday, so we should just be able to blitz our way past them. Luckily, for whatever reason, a lot of these backmarker cars have actually spread out quite quickly as well. So, Lance Stroll, as we head out of Turn 3, get towards the DRS zone and, of course, the Rattles Boulevard once more. Should be, again, easy pickings then. As I said, I thought we were running quite high wings, but clearly everyone is this weekend. There is always a bit scary when the AI close you in through that little kink, but we do make it through. Okay, Another place gained. Back to P18. Of course, second race this year we've had to recover from the rear of the field. The other one being Shanghai. Uh, return, obviously, to the Chinese Grand Prix early on. That was completely my own fault. 
Um, but yeah, this time around, contact with another car has cost me. Van Brueveler really trying to push on in his Haas car as we head out in the final corner. But again, we've just got so much more performance. Whoa! Hey, Ann, come on! Just because I'm going through doesn't mean you need to just inform me you're there. As he actually tries to dive me again down at turn one. What? Jay and Derouvela, have some chill, mate. Not too sure what that was all, but we will swoop through. We're up into P17 then. Next up, K-Mag. So he's starting on the soft, hence why he went from the rear of the field up to P16. But, yeah, it's interesting that no one really knows what tyres to be on. Just looking on the mini-map then, Charles Leclerc absolutely waltzing away at the front of this field. But George Russell has now moved up past Lando Norris into P2. How has our teammate done that? Oh, here we are then, riding on board with George Russell in this GP. He's trying to apply some pressure to Lando Norris in P2 of the Grand Prix. Of course, knows he's now got a big opportunity to take some good points out of myself there. But Lando Norris, he's not going to get close enough. No, Norris actually locks up then. Down at the end of the back straight there. And George Russell will say thank you very much, of course, the former F2 rivals all those years ago. But Russell sweeps through into P2 then of the GP. And that does not do us any favours. Kevin Magnussen as well, uh, another big wobble through the final couple of turns. Not often do you see moves into the final corner here at Singapore, but that's exactly what we've done. And we'll even get the DRS for our troubles there as Pierre Gasly, grip penalty this this weekend, pushed in behind the Alfa Romeos and Alfa Tauris. And he's moved back past Ticton. Pierre Gasly then going for another move as we start lap 7. This time round it's going to be on the man that replaced him down at Red Bull all those years ago, Alex Albon. We're going to try and find a run on Dan Tictum out of the first few corners there to the outside of the Alfa Romeo. Are we going to be able to swoop through in towards Term 4? Yes, we do. And that'll be another place picked up then, P15. We're not actually that far away from the top 10 here. But this rain is definitely getting heavier. But it's certainly taking a lot of time to think about it. So we get a nice run there. Not quite close enough. I feel so tempted just to send it then on Album, but thought better of it we'll have more opportunities again this weekend it's that fine balance so we need big risk to lose out Lester George but we also don't want to do anything ridiculous as soon as I say that we do something ridiculous try and get back onto the road oh no this is gonna make it an even longer afternoon we can just not be in the right place at the right time well, I don't know whether it's the track getting wetter as well, but this front wing damage is immediately costing me... Uh, sorry, rear wing damage even. is immediately costing me quite a lot of time. The oh, track is definitely getting slipperier as well, but it's through the sort of the higher speed stuff. Uh, yeah, that final corner is going to be rather loose and lively now, I think, between now and the end of this Grand Prix. But, I mean, look at that. Just, I don't know whether it's the grip on the circuit as well, whether it's all just combining to suddenly make this very, very uncomfortable, but we are in a world of trouble. I'm certainly feeling a major performance impact at the moment. This is not good. We've got to just soldier on, but any big mistake, and that could be GG's. I mean, look at that. Whoa! That stroll just punted me down at the hairpin as well. Don't give me rear diffuser damage. We've already got floor damage. We've already got rear wing damage. That's probably why this car is feeling as slippery as it is around a track where you need as much downforce as possible. I mean, it's shaking around in fifth gear. Jay and the Rubler now is just romping away. Oh, we've been pretty good this year for, unless we've had an engine failure, all that weird error at um, Barcelona where the game crashed. We've been very, very consistent this year. We've always scored well. We've been on the podium at every single race we've finished. That, I think, might come to an end today as through the final corner. Still struggling with it, but I just... Singapore, I hyped this one up. This could have been, whoa, a really, really good race for us, but at the moment, the car is all over the show. Well, Mark keeps telling me about the rear wing, so I don't know what he's trying to potentially hint at, but... If anything goes wrong now, it's pretty much GG's. I mean, this thing could snap round at me on any moment, and it could send us straight out of the Singapore GP. We've got to risk it, though, just in case. As all well. DRS has been disabled. Tractors that still feel particularly slippery. Is it worth diving in? Whoa, come on. Is it worth diving in? 
and Bolton on a set of intermediates and seeing if that helps. I mean, the track doesn't look that wet still as, oh, we've got Lance Stroll going for it again. Should we just give him some room through the corner? But I cannot believe just how quickly this race has fallen apart. You often get at least one Nightmare Grand Prix a year. We've had quite a few, but they've all been engine failures. This weekend might be the actual nightmare. Look at the way this car's just all over the show. Definitely not worth pitting yet. So I'll stroll again, thinks about it through the final couple of corners. Mick Schumacher now is going to swoop past him, but we're losing three seconds to the Ruvula, surely. Well, we cannot continue to compete like this. I mean, surely if your rear wing was this bad in real life, you'd get a black and orange flag and you'd be forced to retire. But honestly, I'm getting a bit worried that might just have to be the case anyway. Look at that, just full opposite lock out onto the Raffles Boulevard. No. No, 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 no. No. Oh. Check your MFD for a new really? I mean, we've got so much damage. So much damage. Mick Schumacher there. We we're trying to get out of the way. And he's just gone and hit me. Five second penalty as well. How much damage have we got on this car? I mean, look at that. The front wing damage as well. No. This is just an absolute disaster. Unless the team can get a lot of this fixed, which I'm not convinced they will. We, Yeah, I mean, this thing is just going to be undrivable. I think, yeah, unless the team can get a lot of this other damage fixed, it is basically game over for us here. We'll head into the pit lane. I've told him to bolt on a set of the intermediate tyres in case the rain does continue to get heavier there. But, I mean, look, that is quite impressive in many ways. Just how badly damaged this car is. We've even got the five-second penalty as well that we need to serve. But, what? I, I honestly wanted to believe that Singapore this weekend could be genuinely the race where we could retake the lead of the Drivers' Championship. But as soon as we start picking up some momentum... I am cursed. I cannot win three races in a row on this game at the moment, it would appear. That's definitely not to the tyres I'd ask them to do. So we'll get 7.6 seconds up, buddy. I haven't fixed anything else, have they? I mean, you cannot race with all that damage on the car. For all of those of you that claim I've got damage turned off on F122, there's your answer. It is absolutely not. And this thing, I mean, as we head back out of the pit lane, cold tyres, everything like that. Is it undrivable? Still trying to break free in fifth okay, gear. Oh, really? Don't say after all of this we're going to get an engine failure as well. This has been a catastrophic meltdown in Singapore. Surely not. With everything else that's gone on, an engine failure is going to seal the deal. I mean, it would make sense. EA, really? Have we got an ERS? It's jammed on. We can't race like this. The car's absolutely wrecked. Can I switch? Oh, I can't switch it off. The, the car's wrecked. It's, it's total, basically. The battery won't switch off. I've got underfloor damage. Rear wing damage. We're, we're going to have to box it at the end of this one. We cannot go on like this. Whoa. Still struggling to try and keep the car in the right direction. I'm just trying to get it back to the pit lane then. Pretty much sums up this weekend in Singapore, but... Oh, I hate doing this. I really hate doing it. But there's there's no chance we're going to be able to get anything out of this afternoon. We're so far down on pace. I mean, we were losing three seconds a lap to the back markers. So we're a good six seconds slower than the cars I actually want to compete with. We've got a DRS jammed wide open. Honestly, I'm worried that we're going to crash into more cars again there. Felt like it was 50-50 between myself and Mick Schumacher. But that is us out of the Singapore Grand Prix. I hate to do it. I really do. But... Just that contact with Albon, well, the contact with Perez at Turn 1, the contact with Albon as well. It was just a disaster from start to, well, one-thirds distance. That's a spectacular victory, and with it, the championship is secure. It's been a magnificent season, and they thoroughly deserve the cheers of the crowd here today. So, Natalie... What do you think helped them deliver this result? I'd say it was down once again to good, consistent driving, nailing the corners, working to the track conditions and perfecting the team strategies. They got all those things right today and the results speak for themselves. The 
faces on our top three look so incredibly happy as they make their way up to the podium. A much-deserved victory and a brilliant performance from them all. Let's have a look then at the driver's standings. That's a positive result for George Russell, who further solidifies his position at the top of the standings. So then, Natalie Pinkham, who would you rank as your driver of the day? I'll probably go for Pierre Gasly. The team did a good job with strategy to put him in amongst the pack, but it's the driver's job to capitalise on those opportunities, and he did so with a lot of skill. With that result, the sport's newest team can no longer be touched at the top of the table. What an incredible journey this has been for a team many had written off a short time ago. They are the Formula One world champions. Well, that was certainly an exciting weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for more exciting Formula One action very soon. Well, there we go then, the end of the Singapore Grand Prix. And yeah, a mi mixed emotions then, I guess. We are officially Constructors Champions, but George Russell has pulled 26 points away from me in what ended up being quite a dominant race victory there. Fastest lap, two seconds clear of anyone else. So it must have dried up later on in the afternoon there. That is absolutely ridiculous. By, uh, by our teammate there. But Lance Stroll, Lando Norris and myself all not making it through to the flag there. So Lando Norris once again uh, getting dogged by reliability as well. But so, so disappointed with the way that one went there. Charlotte Leclerc P2 again ahead of Valtteri Bottas and Teo Porcher there. Zhou Guan Yu in fifth ahead of Gasly Ocon. Ricardo Perez and Latifi rounding out the top ten there. Schwartzman just misses out on points for Alfa Romeo as well. I'm sure he's a little bit disappointed with that one there. But it does mean championship-wise, 33 points immediately. We have two fantastic weekends where we take big points out of our team here and instantly the gap practically goes back up to where it was. Five races to go of this season. We can still do this thing. I'm not going to give up right until the bitter end there against our teammate George Russell. Charles Leclerc now up at a P3 overall ahead of Lando Norris. Checo still fifth ahead of Porcher who jumps Esteban Ocon as well despite the five second penalty for Teo Porcher. Constructors wise though 236 points clear, 220 points left available uh, between now and the end of the year. We have done it there. Alpine and Red Bull still duking it out for P2. Ferrari and McLaren, there is still the potential for a battle there for P4. And then Mercedes in a bit of no man's land. A long, long way clear of Alpha Tauri and Alpha and Mail behind them. But yeah, just gutted, gutted with that. I hate doing it, but we weren't going to be able to do anything in the second half of that GP. As soon, I mean, to be honest, I think the floor damage was costing us quite a bit as well early on in the race and as soon as we got the rear wing damage it was always just going to go downhill from there but we've got to pick ourselves up we've got to get on with it Japanese Grand Prix next time out hopefully we can have a better result there like I said I'm not giving up on this championship hunt just yet but Suzuka has often been a difficult venue for us fingers crossed we can keep doing what we're doing and maybe just maybe George Russell can get some bad luck as well thank you all so much for watching and we'll be back very very soon with more F1 content None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.